Today we'll be discussing recycled asphalt concrete. This presentation was prepared by Dustin Yankee, Ren Visser, and Andrew Mercer. Recycled asphalt concrete, also known as recycled asphalt pavement, is removed processed material from existing asphalt pavements and it is 100% recyclable. Its need in the industry stems from its potential cost savings as well as increased pressure to minimize impacts to the environment. The table on the left is a breakdown of the costs for aggregate, binder, trucking, and milling showing that you can save $8.20 in using one ton of wrap versus one ton of virgin mix. The table on the right shows the cost per ton of different percentages of wrap showing that you can save 34% utilizing 50% wrap in an HMA mix. The recognized methods for recycling asphalt in the industry are cold planing, hot recycling, hot in-place recycling, full depth reclamation, and cold recycling. Cold planing involves the use of a cold planer or milling machine to remove the surface course of an existing asphalt pavement. This material must be then loaded into trucks and transported from the site. Cold planing allows for pavement to be removed to any desired depth, longitudinal profile, or cross slope. This allows for the removal of ruts, washboarding, or deteriorated surfaces. It can increase friction numbers for roadway users and can typically permit driving immediately after removal. Hot recycling involves utilizing material obtained from cold planing, where it can be combined with a certain percentage of virgin aggregate and asphalt in a central plant to be used in a new HMA mix. Typical applications use anywhere from 10 to 30 percent wrap in new mixes, however up to 70 percent may be processed in drum mix plants. In terms of design of wrap mixes, proper gradation must be achieved of the recycled material by the use of crushers and screening units prior to the use in a new mix. After this, rejuvenating agents are added to restore aromatic resins in the binder that were lost due to oxidative aging. Also, recycling agents are added to increase workability of the binder and improve cracking resistance. Hot in place recycling is typically referred to as a train like procedure where 100% of the process is completed on site. Up to 100% wrap is used in blends, although virgin aggregate can be added to achieve desired characteristics. The Asphalt Recycling and Reclaiming Association recognizes three basic processes heater scarification, remixing, and repaving. In the scarification process, the surface layer is heated and milled to a specific depth up to 2 inches. This material is then windrowed to the center of the road where it is picked up by a pug mill. Based on the design, virgin aggregates and recycling agents can then be added to the pug mill and mixed thoroughly. The new batch of HMA is then transferred to paving units where regular paving then takes place. In order to produce a proper design, core samples are visually examined for defects and then taken to a lab where they can be tested for binder content, viscosity, and aggregate grading. Amounts of virgin aggregate required and recycling and rejuvenating agents can then be determined. These both may be limited in practice, however, due to equipment restrictions and the amount of air voids in the mix. Full depth reclamation involves removing the entire surface cores of asphalt as well as a predetermined height of base course, typically from 4 to 12 inches in depth. The resulting material is then uniformly pulverized to create a homogeneous material that is suitable for a new base course. Full depth reclamation is a more permanent application requiring the entire roadway structure to be replaced afterwards. It is ideal over cold planing in situations where the roadway has poor drainage, incorrect slope, and has suffered from base failures. Users can implement stabilizing additives if the resulting material does not have the required structural strength. They can also implement more granular material when grading is not ideal. Cold recycling is similar to hot recycling in that it can be performed entirely on site or in a central plant. Its typical application is to produce a stabilized base course or low volume road granular surface and generally utilizes up to 100% wrap. Typical treatments vary from 2 to 4 inches, however depths of 5 to 6 inches can be achieved when additives such as Portland cement, lime, or kiln dust are added to the mix, which improve early strength gain as well as provide resistance to moisture damage. Cold central plant recycling is a method often utilized by municipalities for maintenance applications such as pothole repairs or blade patching. Wrap obtained from cold planing or milling operations can be stored at a site for future uses. 
The objective of this section is to present findings from multiple sources and look at different hot mixed asphalts with different percentages of wrap in order to determine the fatigue as well as many other characteristics. Fatigue cracking is a major distress in asphalt which can reduce the lifespan of a roadway. The resistance to cracking in hot mix asphalts is directly related to the fatigue performance in flexible pavements. The test will compare the properties of four different mixes, 0% wrap, 10% wrap, 20% wrap, and 30% wrap. These tests include IDT strength tests, resilient modulus test, and the creep test, and can be used to create an understanding how the mix will react. These tests include strength, failure strains, and toughness index, and were used on different mixes using certain percentages of wrap in the mix design. The more wrap that was included created a higher tensile strength, lower strain at the peak loading, and lower toughness index than that of the control. This means while the mixes showed an increase in strength, they became more brittle, compromising the lifespan. This test mimics the impact of traffic by constantly loading the sample over a period of time. The resilient modulus increased in the HMA mixes as the amount of wrap used increased. This means the increase in wrap also increased the viscoelastic properties of the mixtures. This test measures the dissipated creep strain energy or energy required for deformation. The values of energy reduced as the percentage of wrap included in the mix goes up. This means the energy required to fracture is greatly reduced in those mixes with wrap as opposed to the control. In conclusion, the low strain as well as low energy for creep are very consistent with how the wrap fatigues and ruts easily. These characteristics are linked to the age binder, which is stiffened and is no longer soft and flexible. The purpose of this section is to show the effects of rejuvenating agents on wrap and how elasticity can be regained with its addition. Four separate mixtures were prepared, a control and three others with a specific rejuvenator and 65% wrap. The three rejuvenators used were petroleum, a green rejuvenator, and an agricultural rejuvenator. The stiffness is represented by the upward slope, while the downward slope is representative of the flexibility. This quality is determined by the cracking resistance and the fracture energy. The decline of the upward slope depicts the softening of the wrap with the addition of rejuvenators. This is the quality we were looking for as it will make the mixture more elastic and flexible. CR1, or the petroleum, gives the most effective rejuvenation of the wrap materials. While the fracture energy can be misleading, it helps us find the flexibility index. As shown, the flexibility increases when the rejuvenating agents are added. These characteristics would improve the crack resistance. This test is based on a study in which it is assumed the linear viscosity region holds until there is a 10% drop in the value of the shear modulus. The stiffest mixture was the control, while that quality decreased with the addition of rejuvenators. The softest mixture was the petroleum. This correlates directly with the semicircular bending test. This figure shows the time sweep test results plotted on a log log scale. The results depicted are that the rejuvenators increase the fatigue life of the wrap mixes, with the petroleum showing the greatest fatigue resistance. These results are in line with the other tests and suggest that the rejuvenators do indeed soften the mixes and make them more elastic and flexible. In conclusion, the test showed an increase in softness in the high wrap mixtures. The increase in flexibility and elasticity are desirable and would increase the fatigue resistance. Petroleum shows the greatest increase in softness and fatigue resistance. The use of rejuvenating agents makes the wrap a viable resource and will not only be environmentally friendly, but will reduce costs associated with making roadways when you recycle the material. Freeze-thaw cycles are a type of natural weathering which is unavoidable in many areas of the globe. In this section, mixtures will be analyzed to see how the wrap is affected compared to controlled samples. The roadway was constructed in September of 2009 and consisted of three different sections. Two lifts with regular HMA, 0% wrap, two lifts with a 15% mix of wrap, and two lifts of 50% wrap. All mixes were made using PEN 150 to 200 binder, except for the 50% wrap mix, which was created with PEN 200 to 300 asphalt binder, which acts like a rejuvenating agent. 
All samples were exposed to multiple freeze-thaw cycles, then tested for their engineering properties. The properties tested were tensile strength, dynamic modulus, and freeze cracking. As expected, the highest tensile strength comes from the mixtures using the most wrap. This is due to the loss in flexibility and the material being more rigid. The lowest tensile strength was the control, as it is more flexible. The data shows that the modulus of elasticity got lower as the cycles increased. The modulus was much higher in those containing 50% wrap, but was more significantly affected by the freeze-thaw cycles. The materials using the rejuvenating binder kept their elasticity much better than those without, performing the best of any mixture. The best mix was the control, gradually getting worse as the amount of wrap increased. This was likely due to the brittle aged binder. The addition of the rejuvenating binder did increase the 50% wrap mixture to a point where its characteristics were similar to the control. In conclusion, these results aligned with the results found in many other studies. The brittled age binder was more susceptible to freeze-thaw cycles than the control. The addition of the rejuvenating agent greatly increased the 50% wrap, making it comparable to the control and in some cases even better.